Seeing things from different perspectives is essential for creativity. However, the ability to see things through a different lens does not come by chance. Luckily, many techniques exist to stimulate creative thinking, for most of which no special tools are needed. Hi, my name is Arman Karahanoğlu. I'm a design researcher and an assistant professor at the University of Twente. For this video lecture, I compiled a collection of most commonly referred tools and techniques that foster creative thinking. These techniques can be useful in generating original ideas in many research and design projects. The goal of this lecture is to inform you about these techniques that could inspire you when creativity becomes an essential aspect of problem solving. Everyone can be enthusiastic about problem solving and eager to come up with practical and even transformational solutions to challenging and complex problems. However, creative problem solving is not always easy. It can be a painful and messy process. One of the reasons for the messiness is our mental connection to the other world. This connection mostly leads us to come up with generic solutions, and sometimes we feel stuck with those solutions. To overcome this challenge, we have to step out of the outcome assumptions and must change our perspective. This is where creative thinking methods come into play. In the following minutes, I'll tell you how. But to start with, I think it's best to speak about brainstorming, which is a very commonly used idea generation method. So what is brainstorming? Coming up with straight suggestions, usually socially disapproved, and leads to people holding back in everyday situations. However, brainstorming deliberately permits to be stupid and childlike. The main idea here is that our minds are highly associative and one thought easily triggers another. The views of others will stop us from getting blocked by our thinking structures. Brainstorming works when people use each other's ideas to trigger their thinking. And what makes brainstorming a practical, creative thinking method is the high number of ideas it results in. The idea in brainstorming is to force the participants to generate many ideas in a short time. A typical example is generating 100 ideas in 30 minutes. This way of generating ideas is also known as pressure cooker exercises. In brainstorming, participants' willingness to speak out ideas freely without fear of criticism increases over time. This procures the participants to move away from their initial ideas and come up with more original ideas. Now that we know the basic rules of creative thinking, we can move to different ways of creative thinking. One of these ways is reverse thinking. As the name suggests, reverse thinking tries to solve problems in a reverse way to the flow that we know and by embracing the opposing viewpoints. This switch gives the participants a new perspective and leads to new and original ideas. So how does this work? In a reverse thinking creativity session, participants do not ask direct questions like what can we do to solve this problem? Instead, the discussions start by asking a reverse question, such as how could we never solve this problem? Or what can we do to achieve the opposite effect? This brainstorming technique can be instrumental in making you realize your current state. And this way of thinking results in generating original ideas on how to tackle them. Another technique that works well as a different brainstorming method is brainwriting. Brainwriting is a perfect collaborative creativity method to generate original ideas. In this method, instead of asking participants to shout out their ideas, they are asked to use a pen and paper to reveal their ideas. This technique works best when it involves six people to write three ideas in five minutes on a blank worksheet. This technique is also known as 635 brainwriting because of the six people, three ideas and five minutes connotation. The goal of this technique is to have a gallery of ideas to facilitate group discussion 
around the ideas that the group generates. This technique involves each participant to write three ideas or solutions on a worksheet. Applying this technique creates silent five minutes for each participant to concentrate on their ideas without discussing those with the others. Once the five minutes is over, the sheet is passed over to the participant on the right, who adds three more ideas on the worksheet. The idea is that seeing initial ideas can trigger many more original ideas. A brainwriting session ends when the worksheet reaches initiator or when it is complete. This process results in 90 ideas or solutions within 30 minutes, which can be assessed further for the best solution. A follow-up of this technique can be either table discussions or brain drawing. For brain drawing, each participant picks one of the ideas that came out in brainwriting session and then takes silent five minutes to draw or detail the idea on a worksheet. After the initial five minutes, the sheet is passed over to the participant on the right, who works on developing the idea that comes in front by making suggestions or writing questions on the sheet. Similar to brain writing, a brain drawing session ends when the worksheet reaches the owner of the worksheet. This technique works best when accompanied by other brainstorming techniques. Sometimes it becomes challenging to estrange the participants of creativity sessions from the original problem statement. At that moment, analogies could work as an inspirational method. The idea is to think about the associations between different things. In other words, you should say that something is like something else. The most easy to use ones are direct analogies, personal analogies, nature analogies and fantasy analogies. I think an example could work here the best. Assume that you're asked to generate ideas for displacement. An easy direct analogy for displacement would be walking. A personal one would be to think about travel of blood in your veins. A nature analogy example would be the way snowflakes travel and a fantasy analogy would be traveling on a flying carpet. With this technique, you could come up with as many analogies as possible. The more ideas you come up with, the crazier those could get. There can be problems that you need to understand the people involved in the problem and the sequence of the actions that create a problem. In that sense, role-playing and storyboarding could give you the answers that you need. Sometimes challenges we face need to be solved by considering the complexity of these societal problems. And those problems obviously involve people. A way of dealing with complex issues is to picture the story of the problem. Using storyboards as a way of thinking helps to clarify the roles of different parties involved in the situation. Alternatively, you can role-play the situation to mentally detach your way of thinking by getting out of your own character. Similar to what an actor does, you take on another person's characteristics and start thinking from others' perspective. Getting into another character even legitimizes thinking differently, allowing you to feel okay with acting strangely. Acting similar to the way people involved in the challenge also helps you to make diverse associations and finding the sources of the problems. This way of creative thinking also a good exercise of emphasizing people involved in the challenge. Thinking that others will not accept results in avoidance of those creative thinking styles. At that moment, six thinking heads can work as an excellent creative thinking method. In this method, heads are useful metaphors. They go over your head. It's where your ideas spark. To some extent, heads act as a disguise. Each head has a role and the participant who has the function also takes the role of the head connotes. Swapping the heads during the discussion session works as a way of changing the perspective. In six thinking head sessions, the beginning might feel a bit awkward. Sometimes participants might feel that they cannot immediately jump into a different perspective. However, studies show that trying on the heads becomes a robust way of taking different views and feeling empowered to step out of the box.
In this manner, people who are less inhibited can also get the idea of thinking more broadly. In the end of a creative thinking session, there can be moments in which you want to categorize ideas or not sure how to structure things. In that sense, mind mapping could help you to structure your ideas. A mind map consists of words, concepts or ideas that are linked to or arranged around a central concept. At its basic form of a mind map, you can write the words separately and connect them with lines. It could be drawn in a tree shape format or diagram that points out the connections and relations between different components or ideas. This way of rethinking helps to overview the information much faster and eliminates the risks of clouding minor but critical points related to the problem. In this video lecture, I briefly introduced the most commonly referred creative thinking methods. I hope this knowledge will be useful for your future idea generation sessions. If you have any questions or comments, please do not hesitate to leave them under this post or send me an email.